The only trouble with all these Porsches, Ferraris and BMWs is that they're, well, not British. So to find a supercar which wears Union Jack boxer shorts on its little ends and which was designed by a man known to consult his dog, we sent Jeremy for a day out at the seaside. Thanks very much. Wonderful. Blackpool seems to be stuck in a different century. There's something very old-fashioned, very decent about the place. And the same, it must be said, goes for its fish and chips, which, let's face it, are a lot more comfortable on the nether regions than chicken chili jalfrezi. But here's the thing, OK, if you could combine the old-world charm of Blackpool with some of its thrills, You'd have a hell of a car! Bloody hell! Fire! And here is just such a car. A blend of traditionalism and gut-wrenching power. It's a TVR, and this is where it's made. Now, most car factories are quiet, clean, automated places. But this, remember, is Blackpool. do in this ramshackle collection of prefabs is fit huge engines to box girder bridges and then they garnish the finished product with a bit of craftsmanship. It's not like a normal car factory and that's not surprising because it doesn't have a normal boss. Peter Wheeler doesn't like frills, he doesn't like suits and he's the only man in the world who smokes more than I do. I like him a lot which is why we'll start off with a simple question. So, Pete, what's with the plastic body shells, then? It has a plastic body for a variety of reasons, but it's the last thing that should put people off buying the car. The material of the body is, for example, ten times as expensive as steel. The only advantage of it to us is the fact that the tooling costs are a fraction of those for a steel-bodied car. The big advantage of fiberglass is that it is probably one of the best any energy absorbing materials that there is. It was said not long ago that BMW had spent more money on the tooling for the 7 Series dash than TVR spent in 40 years of its history on development, the whole of its car range, and it's probably correct. Uh, what it enables us to do is to make cars that are not made out of whim, but they are not, we don't do any market research whatsoever. And basically, if we produce a car and everybody says, oh, we don't like it, we're scrapping 100 grand and not 500 million. So it allows some flexibility. So far, we haven't, in recent years at least, scrapped uh, even 100 grand worth of tooling. But that's probably more luck than judgment. It may also have something to do with Ned. Now, Ned, I understand that you're chief stylist here at TBR. I think we've got one of the arty types here that won't talk. Do you need an agent or something? His styling phase is over now. He, he, he basically sits in the accounts and runs the accounts department at the moment. But when he was a puppy, he, he did have a hand in some styling on the Camara. Basically, he was trying to savage the guy who was trying to style it at the time and missed his head and, and bit a chunk out of the car. So the indicator hole on yes. a Camara was styled by Ned, yes. <laughs> now, no one has ever accused TVR of making a boring car. However, I have heard questions asked about reliability. Well, this car here has done 69,000 miles, the last 3,000 of which were done by me on a huge trans-European thrash. I got to know it pretty well, and I can tell you it felt, and still does feel, as tight as Vanessa May's G-string. 